goal will be able to calculate greatest common factor given two or more monomials. All right, first question. What's a monomial? A monomial has potentially, it doesn't have to have a coefficient. All right, but if there is a numerical part, it'll be called a coefficient, a whole number. Coefficient multiplying variable terms, all right? Variable terms might be taken to exponents. That's a monomial, okay? No pluses allowed, no minuses allowed, no divided by allowed, only multiplication. What is GCF, greatest common factor? Factors are usually small things, okay? So we're saying the biggest, in a set of small things, all right? The biggest small thing that divides into two or more numbers, all right? And that's where the common comes in, all right? It's a small thing that divides into two things in common or three things in common. It's the biggest in the set of small things that divide into. We're going to look at how that works. Actually, again, a little bit of a review. How can you find GCF if you're just dealing with numbers? There's two main strategies that I tend to employ. The first one would be you can make a factor tree. Uh, that, would say, that would mean that you got to decide what numbers do you know that divide into 756. What numbers do you know that divide into 928? So I'm going to start with 4 times something equals this, uh, 189. And then I know 9 divides this 21 times, 7 divides that 3 times, 3 divides that 3 times, 2 divides that 2 times. A factor tree will give you your prime factors of 756. So 756 could be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 7. That's called prime factorization form. All right, you guys learned that in middle school, elementary school. Same idea over here. 924, if I want to break it down into... Prime factors, I know 3 times 308 will divide that, 4 times 77 will divide that, 7 times 11, 2 times 2. All right, so the prime factor form for 924 would be 2 times 2 times 3 times 7 times 11. All right. Now, greatest common factor of these two things after you get them into prime factor form would be uh, identifying which factors both of them share. So they share a 2 and another 2 and a 3, but not the second 3, not the third 3. They share the 7, right? 2, 2, 3, 7. 2, 2, 3, 7. All right, they don't share the 11, okay? So 2 times 2 times 3 times 7 will be the GCF of both of these. All right, multiply that back together. 21, 42, 84. 84 divides both of those. You could double check it using a calculator. 756 divided by 84 is 9, and that'll be those two threes left over, right? And 924 divided by 84 is 11, right? That's that 11 left over, okay? So that's one way to find GCF. If you don't like that way, there's another way. Uh, so I'm going I'm to do this with a different example. Okay, you kind of got to ask the same similar. You kind of got to ask the same questions, but this way some people find it a little bit easier. 
First, you have to pick a number that you know divides both of the numbers that you're trying to find a GCF of. So, for example, I say 4 divides this, and then you do your division. All right, and you could use a calculator if you need to, uh, or do what I do, right? So, 4 goes into 672. 168 times, 4 goes into 798 times. All right, step one, step two, ask the same question again. What number was the biggest number? Because the bigger, bigger numbers that you pick, the, the faster this process will happen. Uh, biggest number that you know that will divide into both of those. I actually can't think of any huge numbers that will divide into both of them. Uh, we'll go with 3. Alright, 3 goes into 168, 56 times, and it goes into 198, 66 times. Alright. And you keep asking that question uh, until you have prime numbers or relatively prime numbers left at the bottom. So what number goes into both of these? Let's go with 2. 2 goes into 56 28 times and it goes into 66 33 times. All right, 4 times 7, 2 times 2 times 7. Uh, 3 times 11. Alright, so nothing nothing but 1 is going to divide into both of those. So that's when, you're, that's when you're done with your process, when there is no common factors between the two of them. Then, how do I find my GCF? My GCF will be along the left side. Multiply those three numbers, or however many numbers you end up with together. So 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. All right, 24 is the biggest small thing that divides into both of them. All right, so that's two different strategies you could use to find GCF. There are also computer programs and calculator programs that will find a GCF of numbers for you if you have access to them, but you probably won't when you're quizzing. So you're going to have to pick a strategy that works for you finding GCF. All right, finding GCF with just variables is actually a whole lot easier. X to the fourth, X to the sixth. Uh, the GCF of these is going to be X to the fourth. All right, C to the third, C squared. The GCF of those will be C squared. P to the seventh. P to the ninth, GCF of these will be P to the seventh, H to the third, H to the seventh, the GCF of those will be H to the third. All right, now take a look at it, see if you can figure out which number I'm circling, why I'm circling that number. Basically, when you find a GCF with variables, you just take the base and exponent that are smaller. All right, so x to the fourth is smaller than x to the sixth. This is my GCF between the two of them. All right, uh, why does it work? Let's look at just this case. What does x to the fourth mean? It means x times x times x times x. What does x to the sixth mean? It means x times x times x times x times x times x. All right. If I were to multiply x to the fourth by x squared, I would get this number. So I know that if I can multiply x to the fourth times something to get x to the sixth, x to the fourth is a factor of x to the sixth, and it's going to be the biggest factor that they share because it's the biggest number that goes into itself, right? You can't get a bigger one goes into it. All right, anyway, long story short, 
If you're asked to find the GCF of a variable, pair, same basis, you choose the one that has the lower exponent, all right, the smaller exponent. All right, so now putting both of those pieces together, this is what we're going to be asking you to do. Find the GCF of stuff like this. Okay, so we got two different strategies that we can use. Uh, with the variables, you don't have to you don't have to worry about them till the end, or you could you could worry about them in the beginning, right? P to the third P, which one is smaller? Just regular old P to the first. Uh, Q, Q to the fourth, which one's smaller? Just regular old Q. R to the sixth, nothing. R to the zero, which one's smaller? R to the zero smaller, so I'm not gonna have an R term. All right, now with my numbers, 60 and 220, I'm going to either have to use a factor tree or that other method that I was showing you. All right, for this one, let's go factor tree. All right, 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 equals 60. Two times two times five times eleven equals two hundred twenty. Again, if you need to review factor trees, if you think you're going to prefer this method, you can search factor tree or GCF on YouTube and find probably a thousand videos uh, that could give you more examples. All right, but two times five times two—that's my GCF. All right, uh, that's twenty. All right. Maybe I could have guessed that 20 is the biggest thing that divides 60 and 220. Anyway, 20, and then my Q, and my P. All right? This is the greatest common factor, the biggest thing that divides into both of those monomials. All right, that's how it works. I'll do another example, just like it. All right, this time we'll use the... I call it upside down cake method. So I know 10 divides both of these. Fifty one times twenty seven times. I know three is going to divide both of them. Seventeen. That's a prime number, so this is going to be the end of the line. All right, there is no number that divides both 17 and 9 except for 1. So multiply on the left. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 is my greatest common factor. It's the biggest small thing that divides into 510 and divides into 207. All right, so 30. And then looking at my variables, x to the fifth, x to the third, I will take the smaller one, x to the third, y to the fourth, y, again, I will take the smaller one, y to the first, All right? This is my GCF final answer, All right? Greatest common factor of these two. Hit pause, try this one before I do it. So hit pause, try it, and then unpause. All right, here we go. Method number one, four times seven, two times two, seven times 10, two times, ooh, my fault, two times five. They share a two and a seven. So 14 is the greatest thing that divides into 28 and 70. M squared, n to the sixth, p to the zero power is smaller than p to the fifth power. All right, so we got 14, m squared, n to the sixth. That's it. That's the GCF, greatest common factor. All right, again, hit pause. Try this on your own. See, see what you can do with it.
Ah, I know five divides both of those. 147 times. Four hundred forty one times. I I don't see any easy numbers to divide both one hundred forty seven and four hundred forty one, although wait. Uh three will divide both of them. Forty nine times and hundred. 47 times. Oh, look at this. 147, 147. Here's what we got. Uh, this would have been better to do by... This would have been better to do by factor tree, maybe. All right. So... 7 to about 7 and 21. All right, so anyway, point of the matter, end of the day, these numbers on the left side, if I multiply them together, I will get my GCF. So we got 5 times 3 times 7 times 7. All right, 735. 147 is a common factor, but 735 is the greatest common factor. All right, and sometimes that happens if, if one of your numbers actually divides into your other number. Let me double check again with the calculator and make sure that that's true. 2,205 divided by 735 should give me 3, All right, which it does. So this thing is a factor of itself, and it also divides into that. All right. So 735, and then with my, my h terms are the same, so h to the fifth, and I want my smaller g term, g to the first, all right? Here is my answer. All right, we're looking at just one more. What do you do if there's three monomials? Okay, if there's three monomials, the variable part is the same. Just look for the smallest among all three of them. The number part, uh, if you're using a factor tree, you have to make sure that the factors are shared by all three of them, not just two of them. If you're doing a upside down cake method, layer cake method, again, you have to make sure that you have a number on your left that divides all three of them, not just two of them. All right, so 2 divides all 3 of these. Uh, 42 times, 105 times, 84 times. It looks like 7 is going to go into all of these. 6 times, 15 times. 12 times, looks like 3 goes into all of these, 2 times, 5 times, 4 times. Okay, and here you see 2 divides both 2 and 4, but it's not going to divide 5, so I'm going to stop there. All right? No number will divide all 3 of the numbers along the bottom. Okay, so here's my GCF. 2 times 3 times 7, which is 42. All right, 42 is the biggest number that will divide into all three of the numbers at the top. And then for my variables, we've got a squared is the smallest. There is no b term here, which means b to the 0, which means I'm going to keep my b to the 0 and not have a b term here. And then c to the second power is the smallest c term. All right, and then that's my final answer, 42a squared, c squared.